a React-based framework that lets you build complete web applications within a single project. It uses Node.js runtime for all the server-side operations. You can build front-end pages while working directly with your database using server actions and API routes. Instead of sending the JavaScript file and use that to render all the elements on the client side, it first renders all the HTML and then sends that file to the client. Now, if the page has client components, the HTML file is fully rendered but is uninteractive for a few seconds until the browser downloads and attaches the JavaScript to the page. This is also called hydration and this process makes the Next.js apps snappy to navigate. I'm putting cases on all you bitches. Huh? To start, create a project with all the defaults I'm begging you. Then open the project and in here we add our static files and images which we can later use in a image tag. Now if you open up src, you can see that all your source code lives inside here. But inside the app folder, any file that you create is automatically assigned to a path with the same name. This is also called file-based routing. There are some special keywords to create different kind of pages. In a layout, you have a UI shared between multiple pages. And the page defines a Next.js page. And also if we put the name in a square brackets we get a dynamic page. Make sure to export each page as default. You can also have independent layouts for each page. The main layout contains fonts, SEO stuff and receives a children as prop. This is because the component hierarchy follows a specific order based on these special keywords. Before we go to backend and shit, have a look at next.config to enable experimental features and customize your build. To define endpoints, create a route.ts inside the API folder. In here, the folder name determines which path your endpoint is going to be assigned to. Then we can create endpoints with different HTTP methods like get, post and so on. And when you do that, just like a traditional express endpoint, you can call them in a client component. Now you might ask, why a client component? In fact, let's compare client and server components. Every time you hear these words, I want you to think of them as no interactivity and yes interactivity. Yeah, that's not funny. Page and layouts are server components by default, which makes us able to directly call our database and await for the response without the need of any hooks. Uh, that's it. But to add interactivity and be able to use hooks, we need to make a client component using the use client directive. Server components can still have interactivity, but only with native HTML actions and server actions. Speaking of which, you can define your server actions to mutate data or use Use it in form validation and submission. To create one, add a function inside a server component with the use server directive. Or you can define it in a separate file to be able to use it inside a client component. You can see that you don't need any special keywords for this one. And inside the actions, you can revalidate your path. Which brings us to all the render bullshits in XJS. If you run the build command, you can see that how each page is being rendered. A static is just a page. SSG means the page is being created at the build time. If we want to update this page, we can have ISR, which is SSG plus automatic rebuilds of the page or revalidation after a specific time. We can also revalidate our page on demand with the use of this function inside a server action. The last one is SSR, which in this case, the page is being rendered on every request, making it possible to have a updated HTML every time. Tell me what I missed on Next.js. Thanks for watching and have a good day.